Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to This Life, a podcast by Mallorca Media. I'm your host, Felix Mallorca. Thank you once again for joining me. And for those of you that have been listening since day one, thank you. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, I checked on Apple Podcasts and I see that you guys have, uh, or you guys and gals have put some reviews in. You have rated it. That means a ton to me. Thank you so much. Even if it's just like, I think right now it's at 14 reviews, but that's that's pretty dope. That's that's dope to me. Um, thank you also to our sponsors, Local Hub, and I want to big. I want to give a huge shout out to Wild Barrel Brewing. Um, they donated some beers to us, and I mean, I'm I'm stoked off that. That's amazing. If uh, we'll talk more about them later in in the podcast, but if you work for a company, if you own a company, and you want some free pub, well, not exactly free, but you want to donate something and just get some ad space, let me know. Uh, shoot me a DM, email me. Uh, my email is myarchimedia at gmail.com. Um, I should probably change that to Felix at myarchimedia. But anyway, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, today is going to be a fun one. I'm sitting here with Noe Contreras. Contreras. Yes, sir. Is it Noe? Noe, right? Noe. Noe Contreras. Thanks for being on the on the podcast, man. Thank you for having me, man. I'm excited. A little bit closer. A little bit nervous, but... A little bit closer. Closer? Closer. This close? A little bit closer. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There. You got to get real close, dude. Okay. Okay. So a lot of a lot of guests uh, kind of tend to be back here, but when you're back here, you can hear more of the kind the of echo. the ambient sound, the echo. Um, so don't even worry about it. It's not just you. Um, Noe owns his own remodeling company. Um, remodeling and design. It's called Top Notch Remodeling and Design. Uh, so if you're looking for something, I know people have been sitting in their homes and just kind of mm. looking at things that they need to be fixed. Hit Noe up. Uh, so yeah, we've actually known each other for quite a while. Um, so tell me, I mean, tell everyone how, how we know each other. I mean, uh, pretty much from high school. Um, I know we went to Hidden Valley together, but I was a little bit low-key back in the day. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, man, since high school, those Orange Glen days. High school, we played football <laughs> together. What position did you play? Linebacker and center. Linebacker and center. I remember, you know what's crazy? So we reconnected because Noe actually hired me to do some videos for, for his company. And I always remember, what did you guys call the line? What was it called? It was like, was it the trenches or it was... I don't know. You guys had some some name for it. Do you remember the hogs? Was it the yeah, hogs? Yeah, the hogs. Yeah, yeah dude. Go, so hogs. it was called the hogs. Yep. Um, and I remember in so my senior year, our senior year, we graduated in 2013, and I remember I got a I got a pretty fat concussion, and it took me out for like months. Like I had this thing called uh, post concussion syndrome, which pretty much you have a concussion, like concussion. Um, what's what's the word? Concussion symptoms for probably like three months after I had them or four months after, like everything was super bright. Um, and I would get dizzy all the time. I couldn't think. Um, but I was taking photos for the football team and that's pretty much what I would do. And I remember, obviously I would take pictures of the people that like got the ball all the time. So there was a bunch of pictures of the same people. And I remember you coming up to him and be like, yo, can you get pictures of the pictures, more pictures of the hogs? And I was like, dude, yeah, for sure, man. Like for sure. I think you were the one that started the the request because I know the people were like, Hey man, can you uh get some pictures of me? And <laughs> I, I always remember that. And it's crazy, it came like full circle because now you have your business and you you hit me up and we're like, Hey man, let's help each other out and let's do some videos and photos and so that's pretty dope. Um when did you start this this remodeling company? Um I started uh top notch last year around uh May. Uh, no, March. Um, and then um, at that time, it was just me and a helper. And um, we were just, uh, you know, doing small jobs. Um, not really. I, I didn't I didn't have that full vision yet, you know. Right. Um, but slowly, you know, we started growing and growing and growing. It went from, you know, me and my helper to uh, me and uh, another tradesman with the helper and then uh, we just started growing gradually. Um, 
but yeah, man, we've been at it since uh, last March. Did you did you go about it uh, first by like saying I have a business, or you just kind of did side jobs? Uh, yeah, more kind of like I, you know, I did side jobs, and uh, you know, I was trying to do, I was trying to start my own business, but at that time, I wasn't really um, educated on what it is to run a business and all that stuff. Okay. Um, you and I spoke about, I mean, you and I spoke about a lot of stuff and, and we've talked about how kind of this started out, but for the people out there, uh, how, when, how early did you start like doing this type of work? Oh man. Um, well, I mean, pretty much I, I grew up in the trade, man. Um, my father, he would wake me up every Saturday and Sunday morning and I would hate it. I would hate my life. <laughs> I would get so mad, man. So mad. I'd be like, dude, let me sleep. Like, yeah. I'm not going to be doing this when I grow up. Like, I'm going to school. <laughs> I'm going to be a lawyer or something. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah, man, pretty much. Um, uh, I got injured. I got a slip disc in high school because of wrestling. Um, and then after that, I tried to join the Army. Uh, didn't happen because of my legal status. Um, Damn. And then, um, and then, yeah, man. I mean, uh, I was like, man, what, what should I do? Uh, I know I don't want to go to college. It seems boring. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, it was, dude. <laughs> so, um, so then I started working again with my pops as a helper, and then uh, I started gaining interest. Um, I started, uh, you know, um, just um, going uh, and asking other people for work, like the plumber, the drywaller, the carpenter, the um, um, you know, electrician, everything pretty much, you know, and I started going on my own way and, uh, I gained a lot of knowledge. I was lucky enough to have a, a lot of, um, a good men, you know, that were interested in, uh, investing their time and, uh, and teaching me, Yeah, you know what I mean? So I, I gained a lot of knowledge, wisdom and, uh, skills from them. And then, uh, then from there I started going on my own. So what I remember you from high school was that you, you obviously pl played, you played football, you played, uh, or you did wrestling. Um, did you do anything else? No. Or just, just those both. Yeah. Um, or those two. Um, but I also remember you were the, the kid that it, if you had a backpack, it was really small. So you didn't, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was either really small or like all you would do was have like, a, and I told your dad this when I met him, I was like, yeah, man, that's crazy that he has a business because <laughs> in high school, you would have like a folder or yeah, some I shit. Did. And I'd just be like, man, this guy does not want to be here. <laughs> yeah, so, so after high school, because on this podcast, we talk a lot about, or I talk a lot about like how people think th they've taught us to, and you even brought it up. They've taught us to, to live our lives by getting good grades mm -hmm. in, you know, middle school high school, go to a good college, get married, have, or get your career, get married, get a, get a house, and boom, you're done. Um, after, did you know you didn't want to go to college in high school? Um, I mean, for some time, I was like, man, you know, like, I need to go to college, you know? That's what all my friends were talking about. Yeah. You know, what college you're going to, they're talking about college applications, and I'm like... What am I doing? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, what am I going to do? Um... So, I mean, at some point I did, but I don't know, man. Um, I just knew college wasn't for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, uh, I wanted to do something more than just go to school and get an education and, you know. Not that, not that that's bad. Yeah, not, not it's not bad. bad at all. But it's not know? for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I, I also do know some of my friends now that have a house payment because of college. And they don't even have a house. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know? yeah. I was and, like, oh, dope. They have. <laughs> that's and it's true. It's, it's crazy, man. You yeah. know, and they're struggling, you know. So, like, I don't know, man. The 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 education system in this country is pretty pretty rigged. You know, it's it's very difficult. You yeah. know what I mean? And, I know what you mean. And, and it sucks because people work hard, you know. They work hard to get the degrees and then they end up getting the short end of the stick, man. Yeah. And then comes the depression and all that crap. But, um circling back to i i want to talk about what did you do i went to college right after high school because that's what i was supposed to do mm. quote unquote supposed to do what did you do after high school uh 
I did a lot of things, man. Uh, right after high school, I started working at a car wash um, right down the street. Escondido Valley Car Wash. Shout out to them. Shout out to Escondido Valley. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where that's at. Where is that? It's right down the street, man, on uh, Valley Parkway. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. literally right yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I started working there. Um, you know, uh, normal life after high school. You know, you want to party. Um, you know, do a lot of dumb things. <laughs> a lot of k- dumb things. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, um, I, I always knew I didn't want to be broke, man. You know, I, I, I I grew up, um, you know, not having a lot of things, you know what I mean? Not everything was handed to me, you know, everything, like even my dad, like if I asked him for a pair of shoes, he'd be like, cool, man, you're going to go work with me for like three weekends. Yeah. I'd be like, cool, I'm going to get new shoes, you know, get those Jordans. That's dope. (laughs) All right. All right. You know what I mean? But um, I knew uh, I needed to do something. You know what I mean. Um, at that at that time of age, uh, you know, my, my mindset wasn't where where it is now or where it was supposed to be. You know, so I started doing a lot of dumb stuff, man. Like started, um, you know, hanging around with the bad crowd and selling uh, bad stuff, and you know, contraband. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's call it that. Let's call it contraband. Let's call it con- yeah. yeah. Um, pirated you know, DVDs and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Pi- yeah, I would always see you do that out of a van. <laughs> pirated DVDs. Yeah, man, and um, you know, and uh, it was tough, man. It was tough. It was re- real tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I was working. I worked, and um, and then I uh, was doing all these other things, extracurricular activities on the side, and um, you know, um. Uh, sooner or later though, uh, you know, like I said, I, I was working, you know, and I was, uh, doing my own thing, doing side jobs and things. And, uh, it got to a point where I was pretty much starting to, uh, you know, starting the steps to get what I have now. You know what I mean? I was working with like, uh, like huge, huge, huge interior designers in San Diego, some, uh, uh, luxury real estate agents, you know, nice. giving me a bunch of work, man. Like I was making a lot of money and, um, but my greed and you know just not being able to appreciate what i had because i always wanted more yeah you know what i mean yeah and uh the way i always got more wasn't always the right way you know what i mean and uh it caught up to me man and uh i ended up you know doing some time for it so so you did some time for it and i i think this is one of the we or we did a job or you did a job and I filmed it in Mission Valley and after we went to a restaurant and we're sitting there talking and I just I mean you never assume that someone goes through something super crazy yeah I knew you didn't like school (laughs) obviously (laughs) and but I I, and you didn't even you weren't even one of the one of the people that you you go to high school with people and you just kind of go through the motions and yeah i knew you but we weren't very close yeah, yeah. and you kind of popped out out of nowhere and i saw you had your business i was like dude this is so sick because i'm obviously doing the same thing but how did that i mean how did it go when you did time and how did it affect you either positively or negatively um it affected me negatively first man um it's it's scary in there dude you know I mean, I I've, I consider myself a pretty tough guy, dude. But yeah. The, the, dude, I I knew I did not belong there. You know what I mean? Um. So, you know, I I I beat myself up for it a lot. You know, especially because I I would hear you know the other inmate stories and like you know some of them got you know because I, I was actually being uh, I was actually in the process of getting deported. You know, I was uh, detained by the marshals and ICE. And uh, and it was a very very bad experience, man. Like I was in those uh, the those, holding cells. Yeah, you know where they have all the illegal immigrants coming into the U.S. and uh, that was crazy, dude. Because you know, like I started hearing their stories, you know, and how they struggled in their country and why they were coming to the U.S. to you know to have a better life uh, and start a better start a better you know a new beginning for their them and their families and. And they were being treated like dogs in there, man. You know? And I was like, dude, like, you guys don't belong here, man. Yeah. I belong here, you know? 
and uh, not you guys. So, you know that I, I, that hit me hard, dude. Like you know, I would I would beat myself up for it. I wanted to like ram into like it was literally like this, dude. <laughs> damn, damn, dude! <laughs> Shout out to local hub. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm sweating so much. Jeez, you, you want to open the door or mm, chilling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty toasty. Give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I just turned the AC down. Don't tell. Uh, oh, man. Don't tell the owners. <laughs> They're gonna be like, "This man doesn't pay bills." Um, ah! hold on, right, left. So, how you said you did you kind of told them and told yourself that you belonged in there, but they didn't. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, because uh, you know they were coming over here. Uh, they were in there because they got caught crossing the border. Right. You know what I mean? I was in there because they were, I was in the process of getting deported. You know what I mean? Right. So, and, uh, excuse me. So they were on their way in to do something good. You were on your way out because I did you messed bad. up. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just hearing the stories, man. Um, like, for example, there was this, uh, there was this pastor that was coming from El Salvador and uh, he was, he was, he, this story, man. Uh, and he's, he's the one that I saw pretty much from beginning to end of when I got out. Um, <clears throat> so he was telling me that, you know, his, uh, his church in El Salvador was in the middle of like 18th Street and uh, MS 13. Right. So every time someone died from both gangs, he had to like, you know, bury them. So. They found out, and they're like, oh, why are you burying them, this and that, you know, all, all that stuff. And uh, so they told him that he needed to stop. But, I mean, he said, you know, I serve God, not not, not men, you know. So he kept doing his thing, and they kidnapped his wife and his daughters. And I was like, man, you know. And um, they, uh, they, they let him go finally, he took him out of El Salvador, and he came from El Salvador with only a hundred bucks all the way to to the US. And uh and a lot of people don't know this dude, but I didn't know this back then. But I guess it's harder to cross the Mexican border than it is to cross the US border. It's like so it, it's like ten times harder. So it's harder to cross from there to here than here to there? No 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 no. From El Salvador to Mexico. Oh from okay, yeah, so from South any, America. Any, yeah, to, to Mexico, yeah, yeah. Because they got to ride the trains, right? Yeah. Did he ride the trains? And because I guess uh, like Border Patrol in Mexico is like 10 times horrible. Holy cow. Yeah, dude. So, so he's telling me a story, you know, and I'm like, dude, like, you, like, you know, like you guys don't belong here, dude. Like, you know, like you, you're just in search for a better life. Yeah. Like, I need to be here. You know, I did something wrong. And that, dude, just, you know, I literally went from bunk to bunk, dude, hearing these, these people's stories and... It broke my heart, dude. I was like, dude, like, what are you doing? You know, like yeah. you have, you had, you have the, op you had the opportunity that these men want, you know, that these men are looking for. And you're over here, you know, doing stupid things. Um, That's what you were telling yourself. Yeah. You know, just, uh, just taking it for granted, you know, and um, it humbled me a lot, dude, a lot, you know, because I, I had it so good, dude. I yeah. had it so good. You know, I mean, uh, my girlfriend then, my wife now, <clears throat> she had my back 100%, dude, you know, and uh, so I had a good, you know, I had a good girl with my back and, um, you know, I had a lot of work. I was uh, starting to build my dream, but because of the greed of, you know, wanting more and not appreciating what I have, it, it, it led me to a bad situation, you know. How'd your parents take that? Or dad or mom or whatever. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. Um, my mom, 
Uh, she she took it the worst, probably. You know, Mexican moms, man. Yeah, Mexican moms. <laughs> Yeah, my um, mom's probably listening just crying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mom i love you i hope you're not crying my dad um my dad though i remember him telling me dude my dad's always been like um he's he's always been 100 percent with me and my brothers you know he's always told us straight out if you do this this is gonna happen and these are gonna be the consequences you right know? um i love my dad man he's 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 my best friend he's like uh my like the greatest counselor that i could ask for and but um he, I remember him telling me when I was a little kid, if you go to jail because of something that you didn't do, I'll help you. But if you mess up, don't even call me, dude. That's on you. Yep. Like, I, if you call me, I'm going to ask, see if I could pay for them to keep you in there longer. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't mean to laugh, but <laughs> that's pretty funny. No, yeah, man. I mean, uh, you know, and... Um, and I already knew, dude. I mean, I, I was so disappointed, dude. I, you know, because growing up, dude, I mean, I don't know for you, but, you know, for me, it was just like, I, I always want to make my parents proud. You know 100%. I mean? And that, You're dude. You're making me cry, dude. <laughs> but yeah, 100%. That, dude, just devastated me, dude. I was just like, dude. I couldn't even call my dad, dude. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't. Like, you know, like, I was ashamed of myself. Right. You know? And, um. But yeah, that's how that's how, that's how they took it. I think in in Hispanic, at least Mexican households. I don't know about other. My dad's from South America. My mom's from from Mexico. But you you feel like what they did, you kind of owe it to them. At least the the good ones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. There, are, I know some some people that have kind of grown up alone because their parents are working the night shift and they, they have like three jobs and mm -hmm. they decided to go into gangs and that's just they're looking for love and that's how they find it is going into a gang or doing something stupid exactly. but us that were lucky enough even if i mean we didn't have enough like when i was a kid i would always hear wait till friday wait till wait till next friday that's when your dad gets paid wait till next friday and i when i was a kid i thought a bank was just held money and you'd be like, yo, can I get some money? And they go, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't know I didn't know you had to put money in there. So my mom would be like, you know, we'll go to the bank. And next next week, we can go to the bank. Next week, we can go. And I'd be like, why can't we just go this week? Like, you know, just, the bank has money. Like, why can't we just get money? And she's like, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till next week. Is that okay? And I'd be like, yeah. Sometimes next week didn't really come because I'd forget because kids don't know about time. <laughs> but we do everything pretty much. Even when you're older, when you have a, a, a son or a daughter that's always for your parents. And even like, I'm a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. Everything's for my mom. Like, I love my dad too. Dad, shout out to you, but I'm a big time mama's boy. And when I bring, if I ever bring like a woman home and my mom doesn't approve, then that gets me just kind of like, hmm, yeah. why, why don't you approve mom? And then I start seeing things and I'm like, okay, I get it. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> which is absolutely terrible but you know mexican moms have or like they have powers uh so they know something we don't but yeah you're not the only person that that does it for their parents and i mean i kind of went to college for my parents um i mean i wanted to be a teacher but mm -hmm. in a way i think my first semester i was like i don't want to do this i was i was actually going to drop out and do um universal technical it stands for uti it's not, you know, the other, the uterine traction or whatever. Um, but I was actually going to drop out. I was in the same spot where I was just like, I don't want to do college. I don't want to do this crap. Mm -hmm. I ended up doing it for them. But um, going back to you, was there ever a time when you did something for your parents and you were like, this just isn't worth it? Dude. Uh, well, when I, when I actually uh, started my, um, my business, dude, uh, you know, I was, uh, I started, you know, and I was pretty much, you know, going, you know, full, full board. Um, and, uh, um, uh, my dad, the company that my dad was working for had laid him off for like, you know, like four months, four months on and off. And, right. um, and I, A little bit closer and I kept yeah. telling them, you know, and I kept telling them, you know, come work, for, come, come, come work for me. And, uh, uh, this gets me kind of emotional dude because like it, up to now like it's kind of like you know he told me like nah you're not serious enough damn and i was like dude like i'm doing this because of you you know 
Right. Because you've always told me, like, you know, like, you need to do something. And now you don't believe in me? Like, you know, like, I was just like, ah, oh, dude. But that almost, I'm sure that lit the fire under you to oh, yeah. show them, oh, you don't think. Because I've, I've had moments where my parents have been, and it's not even that they hate us or, like, it's never anything mm-hmm. negative. It's them saying, are, you know, are you sure? Are you, are you sure you're going to be able to do this photo thing? <laughs> well, I had one time my dad, <laughs> I love you, dad, but I had one time my dad was like, I, I came home, I, I, dude, oh my God. So I showed up from a wedding rehearsal and they paid me in cash mm-hmm. and it was a thousand dollars. Dude. I was a balling, dude. <laughs> I had a thousand dollars in my pocket and I show up and I'm like, I I do the I did this little bit where I like I played I think like I don't know I played some rap song it was like two chains or something and I'm getting all the hundreds and I'm just like making it rain and shit and I'm like oh yeah what's up like I'm I'm rich as hell <laughs> and everyone's laughing or whatever my brother my mom my dad and my dad goes yeah but you don't get that every month oh, <laughs> and I was man. like and my mom goes why would you say that he's excited and all this stuff and I was just like. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. He's like, no, I, I was kidding, and I, I didn't mean it like that. And but then that also made me think, like, oh, he's right. Yeah, yeah, I know it's just a joke, and and I'm doing that, but I should make more than a, a thousand every two months or three months because that's really not. If you break it down month by month, that's that's shit. Yeah. So that kind of lights that fire, and I mean, how did you bounce back from that? How did you did you have that? moment of i'm gonna prove you wrong or did it bring you down and then uh you proved him wrong well we, we were actually driving to work that day because like i said his company his company had laid him off and um and I, he was working with me you know and he told me that while we were on the road and we got to the job site and i was like i need to go to the restroom and i started crying yeah, <laughs> and yeah i was dude. like ah oh. i'm gonna go poop <laughs> <laughs> you know and uh and i was like you know, like, and I started, you know, just digesting what he told me, you know, and uh, it's like you said, you know, it's never, it's never, it's never anything bad, you know, it's not like they hate us, but I felt like he, he wanted me to prove it to him. Right. You know what I mean? And, uh, and that's what I did, you know, and then I just, uh, um, God is good, man. Also, you know, I give all the credit to God too. You know, he's been there for me, you know, through jail, through starting my business, getting these big contracts, dude. And, uh. And uh, so I got this huge contract, dude, up in Lake Elsinore, and uh, we were remodeling 130 units. Damn. Yeah. Like apartments. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and I, sh- I showed him the contract, you know, and then uh, I'm the- I showed him the the contract for the corporation too, because I-, I was going to make him the vice president. Damn, that's tight. And I was like, "Come work with me, dude." You know, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a loving metal finger right there. Like, <laughs> you know, Come give it a me, kiss. Dude. Yeah, and he's like, okay, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, I was just like, dude. You know, like, but but then we had you know some beers, and I told him I was like, you made me cry, dude. Yeah, that's not cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> If you do that as an employee of mine, dude, you're freaking fire, bro. Don't ever make me cry, dog. <laughs> you know that's so funny. But I love my dad, dude. That guy's, that guy's he's like the best friend I could ever ask for. Yeah. And now, a word from our sponsor, Picnic. Picnic is a small Latina-owned picnic business. Annalie, the owner, has a huge love for art and event planning. She thrives in creating tranquil spaces for others to experience intimate and sweet memories with friends, family, or significant others. She is passionate about what she does and takes pride in designing the perfect oasis. You can book through Instagram at picnic underscore, which is spelled, sorry, which is spelled P-I-C-N-I-C-K-E-D underscore. Choose picnic for your next birthday, anniversary, or even just because you deserve to treat yourself. You will not be disappointed. And even better, she's offering 10% off if you mention this life when booking picnic for the months of October and November. This is a no-brainer. If you're looking for a date night, if you're looking to surprise somebody, or if you're looking to just have maybe a girl's night, at an amazing location, obviously, because we live in, in San Diego, 
Annalie and her team set up the picnic for you. And it's not just a basket and uh, some like a plaid sheet that you sit on. It's pretty fancy stuff. She has different packages. She has uh, different add-ons. For example, if you're trying to spice up that gram, just make sure you tag her. Um, she has that as well. So again, their Instagram is at picnicked, P-I-C-N-I-C-K-E-D underscore. And if you mention this life, you get 10% off your booking for the months of October and November. Back to the show. What was the, I guess, the transition from going into a holding cell, uh, the, the, like the deep, what do you call it? Deportation cell? Mm Mm-hmm. To they call, it, they call it the barracks. The barracks. What yeah. was it like? Oh, the barracks. oh like the military? <laughs> Dude. Government, it was, man. Like we had bunk beds with no mattress on it. Just springs? Yep. Wow. And like AC full blast, dude. It was like, this is mid- mid-November. Damn. Down in Chula Vista. AC full blast. Just Sh- freezing. Showers were at one in the morning. No hot water. And we would get fed a, uh, a bean burrito like this big eight, every every eight hours, dude. Racist. And they were Mexicans, though, dude. They were yeah. the Me- Mexican Border Patrol agents. They weren't even white people, dude. White people treated us good. They were bringing us gummies. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to white people. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, see, did you ever watch the... I'm sure this would, this would kind of bring back a lot of memories and would be... Uh, traumatic, but did you ever watch the documentary Immigration Nation on yeah. Netflix? I could I couldn't watch it all, dude. I I watched. I went through one episode and then half of a, another one, and I was just like, because you see these these uh, ICE agents speaking Spanish, and you're just like, I know you you have to pay bills, but how can you do this to your own people? Mm-hmm. Not only that, when they would like knock on the door and they'd be like, open. Open the door, open the door, open the door, open the door. And then they would open and be like, well, you let us in. Yeah. It's like, what do you want him to do, dude? Exactly, I, dude, dude, I got hot, dude. I had to like stand up and just like take a, like a, like a breath. And I know I've never been in that situation. I know people that have been in that situation. I coached at Orange Glen and I, I had a girl show up one day and be like, sorry, I wasn't here yesterday. My, my uncle got deported. And I was just like, uh, like, I didn't even know what to say. Yeah. Like, that's, that's so, that's. It breaks my heart. Yeah, so dude. I know exactly what you're talking about, about the, the, just seeing that. I'm like, mm, you know, yeah, dude. I mean, I, I got, uh, I had a, a border patrol agent kick me, dude. Really? Like 10 times, like hard because I wouldn't, I didn't want to wake up and eat. Oh my God. Shout out agent Garcia. Agent Garcia. <laughs> Get him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, so after the, the, the quote unquote barracks, what happened after that? Uh, after that, um, I got moved to CCA. Uh, there I was in uh, custody of the marshals. And um, they wanted to give me like five five to ten years. Um, but they, uh, they, they decided not to, I guess, and just... They just, they just decided to uh, just uh, put me through the uh, process of uh, getting deported. Wow. Yeah, but then, uh, so, <clears throat> after that, uh, that's when my wife, uh, she paid for me to, uh, you know, for a lawyer, and then uh, we got a, a bond hearing. So, I was in there probably, like, three months, max. and uh, That's a lot of time. Dude. It felt like three years. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was horrible. I'm dude. sure. And um, so then, uh, so then, yeah, we got the bond hearing. We got the, the attorney and um, and all that stuff. And even the attorney, dude, he uh, the day of the bond hearing, he's like, dude, you're not going to get bond. And if you do, it's going to be like 100 grand. And Damn. I was like, dude. Like, Thanks, just, man. Aren't you supposed to be my side, <laughs> man? Yeah, man. Thanks, bro. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but that pastor, dude, and, you know, and that's where... Uh, that's where kind of, you know, my faith in God also began, dude, because he's he started, you know, preaching to me and, you know, reading the Bible to me and sharing, you know, just the word of God to me. And um, uh, he's like, no, nah, you know, don't worry, man. Don't worry. You're going to get a bond for five thousand dollars. I've been praying for you. And um, 
we got we got the bond dude for five thousand dollars and i got out on my on my wife's birthday oh dude i was i was like that's one of those things man i was like running back dude through the hallways like jumping and screaming like i was like i need to get out of here flipping uh garcia (laughs) off what's up bro kick me now dog (laughs) no he wasn't there no more dude that was at the barracks okay yeah but but yeah man It, it, it was it was it was a crazy time um it was tough, but I'm actually glad it happened, dude. I'm actually glad it happened. You know, I, I feel like God needed to put me through that to make me who I am now. You know, if not, I would probably be, still be a mess. Yeah. Sometimes you need those those rude awakenings to, I mean, I've never had anything like that. But, I mean, I know people that are just so thick in the head. Mm-hmm. Where, and I'm sure that's how you were before with that the greed that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I was very prideful, dude. I thought I was just, like, unstoppable. Yeah. You know? And then you get stopped and you're like, <laughs> oh shit <Yeah. laughs> um oh that's that's wow that's insane do your clients know that you were ever in, in jail or anything or um no you no. know no i never you really have you know the feel or the need to talk to them about it you know right unless they ask i mean i have no no excuse me no reason uh not to tell them you know yeah Cause I know, and I watched, I talked about this like two episodes ago, three episodes ago. I watched, uh, Fresh Prince. I got HBO max. I got it like that. I got it like that. <laughs> um, I'm pretty successful and <laughs> 49 and a month, baby. <laughs> uh, I'm just playing. And I watched that episode where they hired this white guy who was a convict mm-hmm. and, uh, uncle Phil was like, uh, I'm going to send you back to, to, you know, to jail or prison or whatever and will goes oh we should hire him and he goes i'm not gonna hire a convict and he's like no no no, he'll he'll do great so long story short uh i suggest you watch this because it's 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 a pretty good uh pretty good episode long story short they get their house ransacked like it it gets everything gets stolen first person they blame the guy they hired of course the guy they hired so but then after that, they approach him and they're like, yo, what's your problem or whatever? Like, why would you steal from us? We hired you. And then after that, the cop shows up and says, oh, we caught the guy who, who stole all your stuff. He was actually your assistant. And he told Uncle Phil. And the guy was just like, wow. And I think we make a lot of assumptions for people that have been in those situations or people that, I mean, I've, I've met people who've said like, yeah, I've, I've, almost, I've tried to commit suicide. And I don't tell people because it, they just, they judge me. Um, do you ever feel like you're ever judged if you ever say that, that no. you, you went through that? No, dude, not at all. I feel like, you know, I'm not ashamed, dude, that, you know, I, I went to jail or whatever. I mean, it is, I guess in society, it is a pretty bad reputation to have, yeah. you know? Uh, but I feel like we, we shouldn't really put labels on people like that, you know? Not at all. Because, uh, like I said, you know, I, I feel like I needed to go through that to make me who I am now, you know? The Noe that people might have known back in the day is not the Noe that that, that I am now, you know? Yeah, so because of that. Exactly. You know, uh, I feel like my character has changed a lot, dude, you know? Um, and even then, dude, you know, like, I, uh, yeah, I went, to, uh, I went to, you know, prison or whatever, but, you know, I would never steal a dime from anyone, dude. You know what I mean? Um, not at all. Like, Cause you know. I, I feel like, cause now, you know, <clears throat> the repercussions and a lot of people know the repercussions, mm-hmm. but since they're put in that, they get labeled. I mean, you, you can't vote, huh? Can you? No, you can't vote. Mm-hmm. You, you get certain rights stripped from you. And this is a whole nother conversation and it gets all political and stuff. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I feel like, like it's super unfair yeah. cause you get thrown in there and you're pretty much. They want you as a prisoner for life. Yeah. In in a certain sense. It's, it's a whole system, dude. It's a whole system, you know. And even then, you know, I was lucky enough, dude, to... Because uh, uh, even then, in there, dude, it's all political, dude. You, really? If, if they tell you to do something, you have to do it. Or else they you get it done to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I was lucky enough, dude, uh, you know... I got in there, I got, I got in there and I was like, you know, I'm not here to cause any trouble or be in any trouble. 
and I started working in the kitchen, dude. And I was like, uh, I'm going to get fit good. And <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to stay out of trouble. You smart, know? smart. So, you know, it, the gel system, dude, honestly, it's it's a system to keep you in there, dude. You know, there's there's people that I know that, you know, that's all they know. Like, they come out here and they're like, dude, I don't like it out here. I want to go back in there. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's crazy, dude. It's crazy, yeah. you know. <clears throat> but I feel like, you know, like, as a society, we shouldn't label people, you know, who's who's made a mistake. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess maybe if you keep doing it over and over and over and over again, then maybe that person does have a problem. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, we're humans, dude. We're not perfect. Everyone does stupid things, and some people get away with it. Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hope you didn't hear that. I'm going to cut that out. Shoot. <laughs> I'm going to get canceled. Anyway, do you think the work ethic you have now, because we talked about, about business, and you, you have, you're sponsoring a, a boxer. Yeah. You're looking to, you have a new juniors flying pig. Mm-hmm. You have the new business venture that you're still working on how do you have that tenacity do you think you grew up with it or did you learn it along the way did you did it did it come from being in that situation of of having pretty much nothing no dude um you know i i i feel like i've always been a you know a big competitor you know i've always wanted to do you know like i said you know i've always wanted more and more and more for myself you know what i mean um but i've now i've found a way that you know where i want more not just for myself but i want more to help people right you know what i mean um uh help people in general you know what i mean like right now i see our youth dude our youth is lost you know like they need they need great leaders to guide them into uh something better than what the education system has for them dude right you know what i mean and not only that you know but they need they need role models, you know. Like I, I was blessed to, <clears throat> to have my dad, uh, Coach Gardunio, dude. Big shout out to Coach Gardunio. Coach Gardunio, man. Guy, man. I'm telling you, dude. And oh, hold on, I don't need to. I don't mean to to interrupt you, but I told him when he came in. We talked before the podcast, and I was like, "You're one of the people that has made the most impact on this community and oh, yeah. it, the kids at Orange Glen because." We were the little hood rats. We were the ghetto school. <laughs> yeah. We were, and obviously, yeah. honestly, I came from privilege. Like, yeah, we had some tough times growing up, but I know kids whose parents were deported, who just fell into drugs, and Coach Gardunio. Dude, dude uh, yeah, dude, yeah. Coach Gardunio, dude, he he taught me a lot and said so little. Right. Like, it, it, was, yes. it was crazy, dude. Uh, you know, he doesn't even know this. I've never told him, but, you know, when... When he started being my coach, that's when my mom left me and my little brother, and he helped me get through that through just what he would teach the class, you know. And uh, was it football PE? Yeah. yeah, and also uh, you know, like in the film in the film classes, you know. Um, I remember he showed me this video once, dude. Uh, what is it called? How bad do you want it? Okay. And you know, and it talks you know like you need like if you want to be successful, you know, you need to like. Put everything aside, you know, like being cool, um, you know, partying, yeah. uh, football game. You know, you need to focus on on your dream, and you have to get after it. You know, like it's it's uh, it's not a matter of what you want, but how bad you want it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that stuck stuck with me, dude. Up to up to this day, dude. Like probably like once a month, I'll listen to that video. Yeah. You know, just to hype me up again. <clears throat> um. But yeah, man, and then uh, I mean, uh, recently since I started my business, you know, I started you know seeking for mentors, you know, and uh, just uh, just keeping an ear out for you know for more wisdom and you know like ideas and things like that. I mean, I remember one one person once told me um, this is when I had bir- first started my uh, my business. <clears throat> he was like, "So how are you keeping track of your books?" And I'm like. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know? Like, I'm like, just making money, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm chilling. And he's like, look, let me tell you something. The day that you treat your business like a business, up until that day, it's just a hobby to you. Yep. And I was like, dude. Yep. Like, that hurt. I was like, what, what you talking about, dude? Like, I worked so hard for this. Mm-hmm. And uh, But it's true, man. You know? So, uh, I mean, I, I, 
I watch a lot of videos, you know, I try to self-educate myself and, you know, that's pretty much where it all comes from. I, I get that. Honestly, the, I gave myself a one year timeline of starting this thing, not even podcasting. Like I, I, this, this was something I, I told myself I would do and I just kept putting it off and I was such a procrastinator and I mean, I come from privilege. I come from, well, if I can't make it, my mom's going to help me out. And that has affected me during my business. It's affected me. And it's crazy listening to you because I've had to learn this along the way of when I gave myself the one year, why would you give yourself one year? Mm -hmm. You're, you're setting yourself up to fail. So, and even it, it doesn't even have to be business. Like uh, someone told me earlier, like, so you have like a business podcast? Like, no, this is not a business podcast. Like this is like a life. It's called this life because we go through things in, in life. Maybe that helps with the business or it makes your business worse. Mm -hmm. What mine made, what made my business worse was I didn't treat it like a business. I didn't have my business license. I gave myself a year. I didn't even put it down on my taxes because I was like, well, the government still thinks I like worked back then, which killed me this year. Um, but I was like, okay, I'm going to get my business license. I'm going to get my EIN. I'm going to like, I'm going to get all these little things and people don't really know what that is if you don't work for yourself. But when you start doing those little things that legitimize that business, it kind of legitimizes your way of thinking. Mm hmm where you're like, oh, you know what? That's not, a, that's not, I probably shouldn't spend on, on that money or I shouldn't spend money on that because I don't have it. So let me, my business doesn't have it. I don't have it. Yeah. Let me wait. And those little things that kind of like leg legitimize the business kind of legitimize yourself. Yeah. Um, that's, that's crazy that you say that, like the whole during, during film thing. Cause I think, I don't remember someone else showed us that and I got nothing from it. Like I was that kid in high school where I played football <laughs> I didn't need to play football. Like I could have just, you know, I hated football. And I told Gardino you know this. I was like, you know, it, it wasn't for me. But we're never taught that we have options. Yeah. That, you know what, it's okay to quit something if you find something else that you'd love. Like it's not good to just start something, quit it, and then be like, well, I tried. Because that wasn't really trying. Mm -hmm. If you gave it all your all and then quit and found something else, that's it. We're never sure. taught that. What do you think you want to do for like our community? Because I, I think you have such a a pretty powerful story. And have you ever thought about doing something for the community or you, like the youth or anything like that? I think about it every day, man. Um, I mean, uh, well, one of the things that, you know, we've already started as a company. Um, I think I've told you this already with the, the, homeless, the, the homeless outreach. Yeah. So every Thanksgiving, you know, we, uh, last oh. year we did it ourselves. Oh, we're partnering up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told you that oh, yeah, we're man. partnering up. <clears throat> yeah. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, last year we started, we were trying to do like a food drive kind of, kind of thing. Um, but we, I, you know, we were too late to get the permits. I mean, if you know, um, so we just went to the 99 cent store and just bought pretty much the whole aisle of like hygiene things, yeah, you know, and I just big. put it in baggies, put a little Bible verse in there, just bless people, you know, and, and started, we went from Escondido all the way over to Oceanside. Wow. You know? So uh, it, it was great, dude. It was great. Um, the guy, the guys on the team loved it. And uh, just seeing, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, just seeing people smile, dude, it's just, you know, it's, it's a big blessing, you know. Um, but I, I recently, you know, me and my wife have been talking about this, uh, and we want to start a, like a kind of like a youth, um, what do you call it? Like a kind of like a program where you know, like the um, you know uh, seniors, juniors in high school can attend. Kind of like a what do you call it? Like an internship. Okay. You know, because <clears throat> like I said, you know, we're we're taught in high school, we're taught, you know. College, 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 college. You know, take your Some, ACTs, SATs. Exactly. You know, take an SAT. And uh, and and for for some reason, dude, um, construction is so frowned upon. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Oh, it's just construction. Some people see construction just as a kind of like a like a stepping stool. You know, yeah. I'm gonna work construction, go to college, huh. and things like that. Or or some people see like, dude, you do construction, you're like you're a loser. What a loser, dude. Yeah. You know. But, you know, like, it's it's so great, dude, when, when you learn a skill and, you know, um, so I remember um, 
uh, Mr. Brandenburg told me. He's like, dude, <laughs> he's, he's like, dude, you're gonna you're gonna do nothing in life, dude. And oh, was, okay. <laughs> I yeah, thought you were gonna, gonna say something inspirational. I was like, no. He's like, he's like, dude, you're gonna do nothing in life. Yeah. And I was like, all right, dude, okay, yeah, man. You know, you, you mean constru- He's like, you're gonna be working construction like your dad. And I was like, it's cool, man. You know, but I mean, you know, so I want to start something where you know people in high school could just come over and um, learn the skills, learn the trade, and you know, learn some um, some of the business aspects of it too, and you know, and potentially get a career from there. You know, we want to be able to you know um, sponsor people and get help them get their contractor license and start their own business and things like that. That's so sick, dude. That's. <sighs> You're making me cry, man. That's that's <laughs> so sick. Because I've actually thought about using my platform and using my I, I so I spoke at I actually spoke at Orange Glen, mm-hmm. and I spoke about and this wasn't even when I was like I think I'm su- successful now because I have clients, I'm meeting people, I'm doing my my very best to be the very best. At the time, I didn't really have this mindset, but I spoke at Orange Glen and I spoke to a lot of or I, it was like a testing day where freshmen didn't have to test. So they threw them in in, uh, in the gym and they had me speak to them. They had this other computer engineer guy speak to them. They had a Navy guy speak to them, a nurse, and someone that worked at Barona. And that's where, and Gardino gave me props for this when he was like, dude, I saw you and you were just like, wow, this is someone who loves what they do and who knows who, how to speak to people. Cause I worked with kids before. And I remember this kid sent me a, this blurry ass photo <laughs> of me up there. Like, I feel like he would try to sneak it and he went boop. And then <laughs> it was just super blurry. He's like, thanks for talking to us. And I was just like, oh, because I, in my, I didn't legitimize myself. And I went up there just kind of thinking that, but these kids saw me as like, oh, this kid went to Orange Glen and he did this and he works for himself that's wow that's i mean that's crazy because they don't know that that's an option Mm -hmm. so i want to do something like that where and i don't even know how how i'm going to do it but i want to get some interns Mm -hmm. some kids that that want to learn the craft do the craft and then when i'm bigger and i say when because i'm going to be bigger when i'm bigger i'll hire them and they'll be on my team like that's i feel like that's the biggest way to give back to your community is saying you can do it and even if you think you can, let me show you that you can. Mm-hmm. And I think that's 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 incredible. Yeah, dude. I, I you know, and me personally, you know, I feel like my greatest responsibility, you know, as a man, is to you know, is to set the, set that um, set that standard. You know what I mean? Not only for for my family, but for the community. You know, and help them get there. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like that's my biggest responsibility as a man, dude. You know, because I mean. How how great is it, you know, to, uh, how, or how great would it be to, you know, <clears throat> have someone learn from you and then become something greater than you? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? The dude, like that, that I feel like that's like my ultimate goal before I die. Yeah. So, like, I, I got to find a kid on the street or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just be like, hey, come here. Get <laughs> yeah, in the van. Man. Get in the van. <laughs> um, that's beautiful, man. That that being said, we're going to take a quick break uh, and we will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, this beer break is brought to you by Wild Barrel Brewing. Wild Barrel Brewing. That's a wow. mouthful. That's a mouthful for sure. Um, big shout out to my friend Stephanie for reaching out and donating these amazing beers. They have really good fruit beers um, and I've just been in heaven. So. Big shout out to Wild Barrel. I'm sitting here during this beer break with David Williams. David Williams, a little closer to the mic. David Williams. There you go, David Williams. Uh, he is the owner of Local Hub, my only sponsor <laughs> um, right now. But uh, yeah, big shout out to to Local Hub, Wild Barrel. Thanks for your support and letting me do this here. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, um, so we're actually gonna try. Which one do you have? I have the Vice Pineapple Pomegranate Berliner Vice very excited that's a, that's a lot of that's a mouthful as well uh i have the hopulence juicy hazy juicy ipa i love hazies so cheer oh he just went for it he's too excited cheers that's Man. bad luck 
That's good. Ooh, that's bomb. That is tart. In a good way? Yeah. In a great way. In a great way. Um, ooh, this one's really good. It's juicy indeed. The Hazy Juicy IPA. Um, again, thank you so much to Wild Barrel for uh, sp- supporting <laughs> for supporting <laughs> this beer break. Um, go ahead and follow them on Instagram at Wild Barrel Brewing. Um, their website is wildbarrelbrewing.com. It's really not that hard. They have a spot in San Marcos and another one in Temecula. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. David, thanks yeah. for being here. Thanks for the beer, Wild Barrel. There you go. Do you want to plug anything for Local Hub? We're awesome. Come check us out. Workspace in downtown Escondido. We have an amazing space, industrial chic goodness, and we'd love to have you. All right. Thank you so much. And back to the program. All right, folks. We're back here with Noe from Top Notch Remodeling and Design. Um, I wanted to ask you about, so you're wearing one of your company shirts right now and you have, uh, I myself am not really like a, a, I believe in miracles. I believe in God kind of that, that way. I'm not much of a religious person. I don't talk down on people that, that are, and I don't, you know, I'm not one of those people that's like, well, you're religious, you know, you're stupid or whatever. Um, what's the, the verse on your, on your shirt? On your sleeves, because I've I've seen them. They're on the long sleeves. They're on the short. Are they on everything? Yeah, on everything, pretty much. Is it the same verse? Yeah, it's, so it's First Corinthians three nine. Uh, it says, uh, "For we are God's fellow workers. We are God's building." And um, I feel like you know, like we're we're put on this earth, you know, in this in this world, you know, to uh, to to fulfill God's plan, you know. I mean, and each, every person has <clears throat> every person has their own, you know, calling. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I I personally love to help people, you know, so I feel like I, I need to uh, help as many people as I can, you know, before I leave this world. You okay. know what I mean? Um, but I mean, uh, it's, it's it's not more. It's not about religion, dude. Uh, it's all about relationship, you know, with Jesus Christ. Right. Because, um, I mean, if you read the Bible, um, Jesus hung out with all the unrighteous people. You know what I mean? Right. And it was the religious people who didn't believe in him and put him on the cross. Yeah. So. That's true. That That's something I do know about. You uh, know what I mean? <laughs> shout out to the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, like he, when he had, I think she was a prostitute that washed his feet. Yeah. With her tears. And everyone was just like, what are you doing, dude? Mm-hmm. And he was just like, I don't know what else happened, but I always remember that. Because I had to color uh, a picture in CCD. <laughs> Remember those? <laughs> when you used to go to like catechism or whatever and you'd be like, well, I'm putting this yeah. Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, I mean, if you ever want to do an episode about, um, you know, say you say you believe in miracles, you should yeah. have my wife, my wife on your pad- podcast, dude. Is she one of those like Bro. Mexicans that just hits all the miracles and stuff? Dude, no. She, she, uh, she was in a car crash five years ago, four or five years ago. Yeah. She flew out of a jeep, broke her neck, paralyzed for like six months. Doctor said she wasn't gonna walk ever oh again. Oh my god! And she's walking. Yeah, I saw her walking the other day. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, now I, I when let me go back. I said one of those Mexicans. In our culture, we have those, and for some reason, it's always women. That I mean, I haven't met any guys that have it, but they just have that sixth sense. Mm-hmm. about something my mom has it and unfortunately she's dreamed or she's had dreams where like people die or something and then a week later they're super sick Oof. and there's just something about like mexican women and it's not all of them it's certain there's like yeah, it, my, there's, my, my wife always knows when i'm up to no good yeah <laughs> she's like i want you home right now exactly you're like damn it i'm selling dvds uh, out of my truck <laughs> Um, yeah, man, there's, there's just something and everyone that's Mexican knows Mm -hmm. and it's always their abuela or their tia or something like that. Like I've always heard stories about, and this is probably too much, but I had a friend who was like my, my, they were like my roommate in college was pregnant and she was Mexican Mm. and her grandma, they like made some drink or something, some like 
I, I don't even know. And she didn't that know. That good drink? Yeah, yeah, that good, good. And uh, Some vape rub. <laughs> some vaporu <laughs> with some freaking scotch tape and <laughs> super glue. Um, and after that, the baby was, I mean, no more. And yeah. And this isn't even like a pro-life or pro-choice. Like, What is that, man? I have no idea. That, that's some brujeria type of stuff, man. That's I, that brujeria I, I, I stuff. I don't know about miracles, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, there's always there's always that like Mexican like older lady that just like knows knows some shit, and you're just like, How? what? How? You know, dude. I, I always look at that, dude. In, in 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 our culture, there's definitely a lot of weird stuff. You know, there's some extra shit. But I I, f- I feel like that's the same reason why Mexico is the way it is, dude. You know, because of all the, you know, I mean, look, look at Haiti, you know, because of all the witchcraft, all the stuff that they've gone through. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. And I'm sure someone predicted that. And it's just like, there's going to be a hurricane tomorrow. And everyone's <laughs> like, nah. And then, oh, my God, she called it. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, dude. Um, How long have you and your wife been together? Uh, we've been together five years. Uh, married for three together five years married for three so she was around when all that stuff was oh dude she's going on. That, that's how i knew she was a keeper dude and um i i've been you know the total douche to her dude so shout out to my wife i love you baby what's her name priscilla priscilla shout out to priscilla she's held she's she's held it down dude for you know i've been dumb and did a bunch of things and she was there through it all, dude. I, I feel like if it was, if I had another girlfriend at that time, she would have been like, "Dude, see ya." <laughs> Get her. I'm not dealing with you. Why do you think she stuck around? Um, uh, I don't know, dude. Um, every time I ask her, she tells me it's just because she loved me. She she saw something in me, and you know, something different than all, all the other guys that she dated. Wow. So. Let me let me turn to a theme on this podcast, uh, which is mental health. When starting out a business, you always have those ups and super downs, those super lows, those dark times. Have you had any instances of those maybe where you think this isn't worth it or you just have that self-doubt and how did you get through that if you had those? All the time, dude. <laughs> I have it right now. <laughs> <laughs> all the time, dude. No, all the time, man. It's uh it's definitely a big responsibility, dude. You know? It's a it's a very big responsibility, but it's also a huge blessing. I mean, there's been times where I've been broke just so I could get my my guys paid. Right. You know, and like I mean, uh, all the business gurus and like, you know, like those big success successful entrepreneurs and things, they're like, "Oh, always pay yourself." Yeah. But I mean, Don Cardone like, or whatever Don Grand Cardone. Grand dude, Cardone. I, I, I yeah. hate that guy. Dude. <laughs> that, that guy's an idiot. That, that guy's an idiot, dude. I hey, what's up? Guys. It's Grand Cardone. That yeah. is, <laughs> dude. How do you feel about those dudes? Like, I see him. Uh, uh, you know, I like I like Patrick but David, dude. I like. I don't know uh, who that is. Uh, you should. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you should uh, um, listen to his uh, YouTube page. What's his uh, name? Va- Valuetainment. Valuetainment. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick but David. But yeah, I like him, you know, because he's uh, he's humble. You know, he comes from nothing. He's humble. But I can't stand Grant Cardone. <laughs> like, he, I don't know, dude. He's always like, like last time I saw a video where he's like burning $10,000. I'm like, dude, like, really? Yeah. yeah. Like, why don't you like go to the street and give this those $10,000 to someone who's struggling, dude? Yeah. You know? They're so, I feel like they're so caught up in their image and there's, even if it's like that fake, like that, uh, like the fake movie money, mm-hmm. it's still like, what are you doing? Yeah, dude. dude like, you know, and I, I personally think, I, I think he's an idiot, dude. I mean, uh, he, I've seen a <laughs> interview with him and, uh, Jordan Belfort, the guy from the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. And this Jordan Belfort, dude, made him look like an idiot, like yeah. complete idiot, dude. Yeah. Like he knew nothing about business. So, you know, like. Be careful with, you know, who you listen to and who uh, you look up to because, you know, especially nowadays, dude, with the media and all this stuff. Oh, dude, social media makes every idiot, like, <laughs> look smart. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you something because I have a personal opinion about this, but what do you think about Gary Vee? Gary Vee? I don't even know who that is. You don't know who Gary Vee is? Mm-mm. Dude, Gary Vee's that New York guy that's just like, 
okay i and i spoke to my friend mitch about this because he loves like he likes gary v he likes his his uh some of the stuff some of the he drops some gems i will say that he's a smart dude he drops some gems uh but he's one of those like entrepreneur like pretty much preaches to the the younger generation and but he just is like he's foul mouth and is like someone will go up to him and be like hey gary my mom wants me to go to to law school and i really don't want to and he'll be like why are you thinking about your mother what the fuck is this this we have this this pre and he uses like these big words and i'm just like i'm like what dude why do you have this first of all why do you have to speak like that second of all why do you have to like be all like you know like 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 being using that negativity to be like positive like yeah i don't go for that that's ugh. yeah dude i already don't like him <laughs> <laughs> but he does he does drop some gems um something that actually stuck out to me was and this is going off on this whole business thing but he talked about how he owns this wine company i guess I honestly don't know too much about him. I just know about what the stuff that I've seen. Mm-hmm. But he owns a wine company and this guy bought like a certain amount of, of of wine bottles. And then long story short, they checked his Twitter and he was talking about the Jets and how he loved the Jets or how he hated the Jets one week. And they sent him a, a Jets jersey and he didn't even make that big of a purchase. But then that client told another client, dude i just bought this wine and it's crazy they sent me this this uh jets jersey and then that other client bought like a shit ton of like expensive wine and they were like my friend is so and so and he told me that you guys gave him a a jets jersey like that's really cool and i actually took that and i kind of thought about it and thought about how i can do that in the everyday life and in my business so I always try to go above and beyond for clients and like with, for example, you, Mm -hmm. I could have just been like, look, you have me for an hour and that's it. But like there were some days where if I could, I would stay a little bit longer Mm -hmm. or I would stay and have lunch with you guys and I would talk to you guys and I would have that, that little bit of like that connection. And it's not because I'm like, oh, that's going to make them want more or whatever. It's like, that's called being a good human being. Yeah, dude. And I think a lot of a lot of people forget about that. And even with this podcast, people are like, you're really good at talking to people. And I'm like, it's called having a conversation. It's called <laughs> listening to what you were saying. And you talked about God and all this stuff. And I was like, I made that connection of, oh, you guys have that Corinthians uh, verse on your, you know, on your on your logo or on your shirt. What does that mean? My kind of my thing with this with this whole podcast and everything is building a community and um being observant talking to people talking to to people who are more successful than you less successful than you figuring out just kind of what you're doing in life um what do you think you do on an everyday basis to kind of separate yourself from other people and maybe make that extra connection with the the breeze at starbucks or do you even do that do you even think about you know, things like that, because I know it's hard. You're living your own life. It's hard to put that out there and kind of like go that extra little mile. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think about that or do that? You know, I do it every day, man. I, I I try to be, um, conscious about, you know, how I treat people and how I talk to people. Right. And especially my, my guys, you know, my, the team that I have, um, because you know, yeah, you have your life, you know, you could have your problems at home, you know, business problems, things like that. But it's not their fault. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I always try to, you know, like, uh, every time I go to Starbucks, you know, I always try to pay for the person behind me. To pay for, it forward. Yeah, pay it forward. You know, That's it's, dope. Except for this one side, this lady's like, I don't think you want to pay for them. Like, they're spending $120 on Starbucks. Right. If, they're, if they're spending that much, then they should be able to pay for it. <laughs> I would be like, okay, then pay for the guy behind him. <laughs> Can you do uh, every other one? <laughs> That's so you funny. Know? Um, but you know, like I try to, um, I try to, you know, um, I try to have a connection with everyone that I meet. You know right. what I mean? Because uh, you don't know, you don't know what that. Um, um, like I said, you know, I, I read the Bible. You know, I, 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 there's a lot of wisdom in there, dude. Um, 
uh, and the the power of the tongue, dude. It, 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 the tongue, you yep. know, spits life or death, dude. Yeah. You don't know what that person's dealing with that day. You don't know what that person's going through. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So why not just share love? You know what I mean. Right. Uh, instead of you know sharing your negativity or how bad your day is going with them. You know yeah. what I mean. Uh, because you 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 never know, dude. You know what if they tell you something back that you need to hear. You know what I mean. Yeah. So it's just like like wow, you made my day, and you're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> made dude. their day. Like you know, like uh, uh, a lot of people. I remember back in high school, a lot of people tell me, oh, dude, you look so mean. Like that's <laughs> just it's just my face, dude. <laughs> it's my face, you know. Like I can't do nothing about it with your little backpack. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> back. But, you know, um, but I, I try to, you know, um, just bring life to everyone that I meet, dude. You know, it's, 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 I feel like it's, it's the best way, you know, to be, like you said, you know, a good human being, you know. Gotta be a, a, a good human being. Um, yeah, I think I've, I've actually learned a lot from this podcast and um, it's been kind of a, it's been super stressful. I'm not gonna lie. And I just did a, a little, uh kind of like a little vlog about what I have to do through this. And I found myself and I've only been doing it for like a month or something or two months, maybe a month and a half. And I found myself being a little burnt out because I have to do my regular job and I'm going to, I'm not getting paid for this. Yeah, This is just something I, I want to do, but I try not to think about like, well, I'm not getting anything for this, but I get to sit down with people. I think in my normal life, like when we, me and you were talking at the restaurant, mm-hmm. I was just like, damn, like this is something that other people haven't been through they need to hear, but also other people are going through or know someone that is going through. I had someone reach out to me that I went to high school with that was like, well, my dad just got deported and I'm trying to balance helping my mom. I'm trying to balance, um, I'm, I'm trying to balance my own feelings with everything that's going on and i'm working for my parents again they're they're mexican so they have that like puras ganas Mm -hmm. and it's all for my parents and it's all for and i think sometimes we get lost in that where we think i'm gonna do it for my parents because that's what they want and it's a culture thing i think i I talked to gardino about this but i don't know if we recorded it but you definitely get lost in that like well, it's for my parents. It's for my mom. It's for my... You know what? It, it is a culture thing, uh, you know, but sometimes you have to uh, you have to make sense and understand also that, you know, like as an adult, you're responsible for your life. Right. You know what I mean? Um, you could do... You could do as much as you can for everyone else around you. You know what I mean? But you're not Superman. Yep. You have to take care of, of your mental health, of yourself financially... Physically, emotionally, first, before every, a, anyone else, dude. Yeah. You know, because if you, if you can't learn to love yourself or appreciate yourself, then you can't do that to anyone else. You know? Yeah. I, I've learned that, you know, the hard way, dude. I've learned that the hard way. My wife's actually, you know, taught me a lot, too. You know, she's uh, she's she's helped build the knowing that, that, that I am now. You know what I mean? So... But yeah, dude, it's uh, it it definitely is a cultural thing, but we have different options, like you said. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, I hope I think your your story is incredible. And when you reached out to me, I was just like, no, we? like the the guy. And I mean, you did look when you were in school. You just kind of looked like you didn't want to be there. And before, I thought like, well, this guy just doesn't like school. But now it's like you're not interested in school. You're interested in something else. Mm-hmm. What did I say? Like. <laughs> faded <laughs> i'm just kidding you're like you're interested in something else and we were taught like if you don't go to school you're a loser yeah and it's like i've met so many people that are like oh i started i met this lady and she's gonna be on the podcast but that was like she's 38 and she just started a boutique during corona and i'm like that's so brave yeah dude. whereas maybe other people would be like you're an idiot why would you do that yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean so Man, but, I just want to. But, but let, let, let's talk to you, to the youth right now, dude. Yeah, go for it. In high school, I remember. I think you won like what, like best dressed or something like that. 
I mean, I won a lot of awards. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But you know, like the message I'm trying to get at there. Yeah, I won like best you know, spirited that, or some that shit. That was like that was like so cool in high school, right? That was a thing. But you know, like, does that really matter now? Nope. You know, I don't even know what it was. I think it was like more spirited <laughs> or something, and it was one year. You know, and it's just uh, it's crazy, dude. You know, we we uh, we get stuck into that. You know, like what's cool? I want to do that. You know what I mean? At the moment, yeah. You know, and it's uh, it, it's uh, you know, instead of worrying about that, you should worry about what your what your next move is. You know what I mean? Because <clears throat> I've had people tell me like, dude, well, why are you so? Why are you the way that you are now? When you're young, you know, because, it, you know, I've had people tell me, su- successful people tell me, like, dude, I, like, what the heck, dude? Like, you're 24 years old. When I was 24 years yeah. old, dude, I was, I was At stupid, your age. dude. Yep. Like, you know, like, I was partying, didn't care about anyone. Yep. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, and it's just, you know, like, me personally, uh, and then, like, I don't know why, why you're doing it now, but me personally, you know, I... I just want to be able to, you know, um, I, I'd rather work hard now that, that I have the energy than later when I don't. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So. And this is one of those things that you're like, oh, this is actually going to be worth it. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to be figuratively running on a treadmill. Yeah. Because a lot of the times I heard work hard when you're young so you can be successful when you're older. But I was working for city government and it was, I found out early, thank God that it, it nothing was coming from it. And I'm sure other and other people I've met that have had amazing careers in city government and have done amazing things. But for me it was like I had to sit there and be like do I really want to do this? Yeah. Or do I feel like I have to do this? Yeah. I'm running on a treadmill, I'm exhausted, I'm not going anywhere. And then I just I mean I banked on myself and I think that's another good message for for the youth is like if you believe in yourself, mm-hmm. do it. Exactly, dude. Because if you show other people that you believe in yourself, then they're going to believe it as well. You're going to have the people that know you or at least think they know you. And like, I'm sure people that we went to high school with are like, no, we, the the mean guy that, you know, (laughs) the guy that slipped his disc, like what? (laughs) That guy has a business. Um, But those people don't matter. No. The people, the people, and I said this before in another episode, Becky and ASB that is talking shit to you, like, She's not going anywhere because she thinks ASB is the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. And she thinks that, that winning that award is the rest of her life. Exactly. It's not. Sorry to tell you, but mm-hmm. it's not. Not at all. It's great. Enjoy it. Enjoy high school. Enjoy your life. But know that there's so much more ahead of you. And even us, we're 24, 25. There's so much more. Oh, and yeah. this is going to pay off for sure. Right. I think it is. And I think it is for you. And I think you've done an amazing job. And I saw what you did at the mission viejo house that that i worked out with you guys and i mean i sat there with with you while you gave them like a speech i had to go but (laughs) um you were sitting there and you told them this is what we need to work on this is what you guys have been doing great and this is what i want for you in the future and i was just like i remember sitting there like looking at you just being like holy shit like what a leader (laughs) like that's that's the stuff i didn't have in city government that i needed And I saw them like giving their feedback and you were just like, okay, I understand that. But, or, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And you know, the way I'm like that with my guys, dude, is because, um, you know, I worked for a lot of contractors, a lot of great ones and a lot more shitty ones, dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and it's actually one of, you know, the biggest push why I started my own business is because I, uh, I would go to work, dude, and I would bust my ass off, you know, every day. You know, I would always meet deadlines or even finish jobs before deadlines. Right. <clears throat> and they just give me my check and I'd be like, cool, leave, go home. I and never I never felt appreciated, you right. know, never like, you know, like a little bonus or, you know, like, a, like, a, you know, like a thank you. Yeah. Nothing. dude. Hey, great job today. Yeah. Like nothing, that. you know, yeah. and uh, and that's because, you know, like a lot of countries look at you as a, as a number, dude. You're replaceable. Right. You know what I mean? And it's just like, and a lot of contractors didn't want to pay me, dude. Like, I actually had a contractor tell me, if you come to my house and try to ask for your check, I'm going to shoot you. 
because you're on my property. And I was like, oh, dude. And this was after, you know, like, uh, I went to prison and all that stuff, and I tried to be a better man. And, and I was like, oh, man. Like God, are you testing me right now, God? <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. Oh <laughs> man, you know, man. and it's just like, um, you know, and uh, so I decided, you know, to take the initiative and just create a better environment for my guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, we're a team, and uh, if they see me messing up, I expect them to tell me. You know, I I hate I hate being called the boss, dude. I, yeah, I hate it. You know, I'm their boss, but. You're one of the guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I honestly, I'd rather be on the field with them than be in the office, dude. I hate paperwork. I hate office stuff. I hate, Isn't that I, crazy? I hate I hate school, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then when you're down there, you're like, man, I just want to be the boss. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't get what, exactly, what it's like. And uh, no, dude. You know, I, I was in for a big surprise, dude, when I started being the boss and I had to do paperwork. And I was like, dude, the first time that I, that I had to invoice, you know, a big corporation, for my money, I did it like two weeks late, and they're like, "Oh well, we have thirty days to pay you now." So it was like a month and two weeks <laughs> until I got paid. And I was like, "Oh Damn man, it. yeah," you know. So like, it's crazy, dude. But you know, that's the reason why I'm like that with my guys, you know. And uh, I want something better for them, you know. I, yeah. I don't look at them as a number, you know. If if I grow, we all grow, uh, you know. Everybody eats, you know. I can't be out here eating. A steak dinner and then just eating beans and rice. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't sleep. That's awesome. You know. Well, that's great, man. And I'm I'm stoked you hit me up that one day and I was just like, man, this is so sick. Um, so I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you coming out here and being being vulnerable. I think that's one of the biggest things. I want people to my guests to be vulnerable and I know how hard it is. Um, so I appreciate you coming down and um where where can before you leave where where can people follow you or hit you um, up? The Instagram is uh, at top uh, underscore notch underscore remodeling, and then our website is www.topnotchrd.com. They do pretty great work. Um, check us out. Yeah, check them out. Um, big shout out to Wild Barrel for uh, supplying us with some beer. Um, and bigger shout out to local hub and for for david to sorry and to david for sitting down with me and having a beer with me and just chilling um noe thank you so much for being on this was amazing i hope people get a lot from it i appreciate it man yeah for for sure guys this has been not guys i don't like to say guys ladies and gentlemen this has been this life a podcast by myorca media i'm your host you can find me at myorca media um, again, if you're a business and you want some pub for uh, a trade, let's talk. Hit me up. Shoot me a DM. Shoot me an email. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you next time. Bye. Woo! <laughs> Dude, that was incredible, man. That was, oh. I'm going to think about everything you said tonight. <laughs> <laughs>